Hi Capricorn, welcome to April. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. So this month we have a new moon in Aries on April 1st. And then Venus your, um, moves into um, Pisces on the 6th. Mercury moves into Taurus on the 11th. Jupiter and Neptune come together on the 12th. Mars moves into Tor uh, Pisces. And then we have a full moon in Libra on the 16th. Pluto goes retrograde on the 29th, and on the 30th, the new moon eclipse in Taurus happens. So before I get into all that, um, let's see what the cards say for Capricorn. What is coming up for Capricorn for the month of April 2022? What does Capricorn need to know for April 2022? What does Capricorn need to know for April 2022 in terms of love and relationships? What is coming up for Capricorn? The Death Card. The Six of Wands, the Ten of Cups, the Sun, the Two of Cups, wow, the Moon, the Seven of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the Nine of Swords. And the final card is the Eight of Swords. That's interesting. And the card at the bottom of the deck is the Fool. This is interesting energy. Okay, so we're starting out with the Death card crossed by the Six of Wands. So something, you're, you're ending a cycle. Um, the Death comes up when you're going through a transformation. Things are changing for you, Capricorn. Major transformations. But... Um, it's not, death doesn't usually mean physical death. It's usually the ending of a way of life, the ending of a cycle. And you're in the process of clearing out the past and you're making room for new energy to come in. So for some of you, it could be the end of a relationship where you finally let go of um, something that, that you've been holding on to for a long time. So it could be, it doesn't have to be a current relationship. It could even be a past relationship that you never really got over or you never really let go of. And you're finally putting it to bed. You're realizing, you know what, um, that cycle, that part of my life is over. I need to just, you know, bless it and send it on its way and clear out the past and make room for the new. Um, because you have the Six of Wands here. This is a victory card. So there will be some kind of victory in love. Um, but I think it also... It depends on um, you releasing something that's been holding you back from the past. So when you release all that past energy and baggage, you're opening up, you know, you're making room for the universe to fill that space with something new. And the new that's coming looks great. Um, you've got the Six of Wands, which is a card of victory. You, you know, it could even be a work victory because this the wands can sometimes be business where you're being recognized for your talent, you're being recognized for what you do, even in your own relationships. You might be getting more, um, feeling more valued or more recognized. Um, there could be some jealousy. I'm seeing, you know, for, for the people that are watching you. Um, so just be, but don't, you can ignore them. You're going to be riding the tiger. <laughs> you're going to be riding the crest of the wave this month in April. You have the Ten of Cups in the past in, and the Fool and the Sun. So this is like things are really changing. Whatever you've been through, I feel like that energy is leaving in you know, any kind of troubling energy or um, unhappy energy. And the new energy coming in, the Ten of Cups, you can't get better than the Ten of Cups when it comes to love. I mean, that's pure love. It's not lust. It's not, you know, just physical attraction. 
it's two people who really love each other, who really care about each other, um, who love the you know the in inner person, not just the physical. And you have the fool and the sun. The fool is about a new cycle coming in. So you have death representing the old, clearing out the old, clearing out the past, releasing, blessing everything that you've been through and everything that it's taught you. You know, you learn lessons in life when you go through. Whether they're good experiences or difficult experiences, they all teach a lesson. And especially in relationships that didn't work out, you'll learn, you've learned a lot from that experience. And you're going to take that knowledge into the future with the next relationship. And this fool is you're standing at the edge of a brand new world. And the sun, the sun is about overcoming difficulty. And it's already starting. This is not, I mean, it's coming in the future, but it's already started in the past because you have these great cards, especially the sun in the recent past. You're going to be connecting with a new person or someone, if it's not new, it's someone who really you can have fun with, someone who brings out your inner child, someone that when you're together, you just enjoy each other's company and you just have fun together like kids. Um, like, look at this card. I love this card. They're like dancing with the sun and the flowers, sunflowers. So I feel like it could be, it'll happen around summer. And you have a little dog here that represents loyalty and truth. So it's a really uh, a good relationship, an honest relationship that brings a lot of joy in your life. So if you're not with anyone, be prepared that love is coming. If you are with someone, then you could um, you could have a new start in that relationship because the fool sometimes represents turning over a page and starting over, like saying to you know, like if you've been having problems in a relationship, you could come, you could say, look, let's forget the past. You know, we may have made mistakes and we did this and that, but let's not dwell on the past. Let's just start over as if today is the first day, and we're gonna have a new way of loving and a new way of relating to each other. So you could have that too. Um, so either way, you're either reinventing an old relationship or a current relationship, I shouldn't say, or you're starting a brand new cycle because the fool puts you in a brand new situation. And you've got this two of cups coming up. This is a soulmate connection where you're really connecting with someone. You see eye to eye. You're on the same page. You have the same interests. You just love being together. And this is kind of a time card. So over the next two weeks, it's like a two-week time period. We have a couple of time cards here. Um, things are going to come to a head probably around the full moon. So the new moon represents beginnings, you know. And then two weeks later, we have the full moon. So between the new moon and the full moon, you're going to have something develop in a relationship. It, it, it might be just the beginning stages, you know, because this is in this position. The Two of Cups is in the position of an energy that's just starting to form. It hasn't really manifested yet because it needs to be in this position or higher. So right now, it's just kind of the energy is flowing in. But you've already laid the groundwork by releasing the past, realizing, you know, you're letting go of whatever's no longer working in your life. And you're clearing out. This is a time of, you know, throwing the garbage out, <laughs> throwing out, getting, finishing up old karma, tying up loose ends, releasing relationships that no longer serve you, releasing past memories, past baggage. And you're, you know, it's like you're creating this vacuum and the universe wants to fill it and it's going to fill it with love. Now you have the moon coming up in the near future. Now the moon can be a card of imagination, creativity, so for some of you, you might be connecting with someone where you're, you're doing creative things together, like art or music or whatever. Um, but it could also represent, I, you know, letting your imagination go over the top. So you may be like, can I trust? You might be saying, I don't know if I can, I trust this person. Is it too good to be true? You, you have the seven of swords here. You're afraid of someone betraying you. Maybe you've been betrayed in the past or lied to. Um, because the Seven of Swords is kind of a sneaky energy where you feel like someone is trying to steal something from you or take credit for the work you do or not being transparent. 
Like you may feel like someone's hiding something or keeping something from you. So you may want to like have a conversation to clear that up. The one thing you don't want to do is live in your head because the moon with the moon you can. Um, you can imagine all kinds of scenarios that have nothing to do with truth. But it's something that you're like, well, if you don't know the answer, you're going to make up the answer. Well, maybe this person's doing this or maybe this person's doing that. Um, so the best thing to do is to talk it out. And it's, it's just your fears coming up. You might have some fears coming up um, where you're not trusting the new love coming in or the new beginning. And I even see the Nine of Swords is here. Um, that's a card of worry and mental stress. So you have a lot on your mind. You may be uh, overthinking things. But your environment, you've got the Ace of Cups in your environment. So the Ace of Cups represents a brand new beginning, a new cycle of love coming in. So whoever the person that you're dealing with is looking for love, is looking for a new start. Um, you may be a little bit skeptical. I feel like there's skepticism or you're, you're being cynical about it. Uh, and it's just your fears. Um, like I said, the fear coming to the surface, fear of betrayal, fear of deception, fear that maybe I'm not seeing this person like they really are. Um, but I don't think you really have to worry about that. I just think that it's just your fears that you have to, you know, calm down. Now, the ace is also, it's also um, a time card. And the time is June, July, August. So I'm thinking um, if anything's going to happen, real like, when th like this is just like the few sparks. So you might be meeting someone and it's just the beginning stages. But it will, the flame will flame up. Things will happen around the end of July, the beginning of August. I feel like that's the time frame. So take things slow. Check things out. You, now you have the Eight of Swords here, um, which sometimes makes, it's a card of feeling stuck or trapped. So you may be afraid to embrace this new beginning, but but because the ace is with the uh, the eight is with the nine of swords, it could also represent breaking free, breaking free. Like this new love is going to give you, it's a way out. It's a way of breaking free of worry and fears, and you might be ready to um, step into a new relationship. I mean, you've got this fool here, which represents a new cycle and you have the sun and the ten of these are the best cards plus the ace and the two of cups so the only thing that's um, I think that things are going to be um, great they have the potential to work out in a good way you just have to calm your fears and not overthink things and don't be afraid to move out of a situation that's not working for you because the eight of swords sometimes makes you feel like my hands are tied I can't move I'm stuck um, but really, you're not. The only thing that's holding you back is fear. So fear is preventing this new beginning from taking root and growing. Um, so it'll be fast or slower based on how you, you know, how much you're willing to receive. Are you ready for love? Are you ready to accept someone's attention and love? Are you ready to, you know, break free of your fears and feeling limited and like, you know, you just have to walk away. You, uh, it could be a job situation it could be a relationship you know if you're in a relationship and you're not happy the only thing that's holding you there is the fear of the unknown the fear of actually taking that step and moving on but nothing is really stopping you except you so if you're looking for love and you're wanting to have a, a brand new start don't be afraid to accept the love that's coming this month and this year actually this summer It'll be more, it'll be developing starting in April, like the seed is getting planted and it will grow over the next couple of months so that over the summer, things should be a lot happier. You should be in your joy by summer, by mid to late summer. I'm seeing, because I'm seeing these, these sunflowers, that's like an August flower at the height of summer when it's really hot and, you know, the days are really bright and you're just out there dancing in the sun. So joy is coming. Joy and love is coming. Don't, um, don't let fear hold you back. So let's see what the um, angels have to say.
what messages do the angels have for Capricorn? Because Capricorn has a tendency to be a little cynical or sometimes suspicious. So it's okay to check people out. I'm not saying don't do that. Um, but don't be too um, ne so negative that you don't allow anybody to come in either. You know, don't go to extremes. Be cautious. Uh, be practical. But don't, don't turn love away when it's knocking at your door. Okay. Healing. Listen to your heart. Love is the greatest healer. It has the capacity to balance and heal your emotions, your thoughts, and your perceptions, which in turn will heal you physically. Your angels are here with you, and they will help dissolve your fears. Trust in the power of love to guide you, and your life will magically transform. This card is confirmation that healing is occurring right now. This fits exactly the reading um, about needing to transform and heal and release fear. Um, so just let yourself be healed by love. New love is going to come in, and I think it might even be healing, have a healing influence on you so that you could release any kind of wounds from the past that are preventing you from embracing the joy and the love that you deserve. Okay, so let's see what the astrology has to say. So you have a new moon in Aries in your fourth house. That's the house of home and family. Um, and this new moon in Aries, you know, Aries is an energy of a warrior energy, a take charge energy, courageous, being, you know, having courage. And Mercury and Chiron are connected to this moon. So Mercury is a planet of communication and Chiron is the wounded healer. So you may have to Talk about your wounds. Talk about the things that have hurt you in the past. Maybe you need to revisit some family childhood wounds. Or at least communicate to someone that you're, maybe you're living with someone and you need to talk to have a healing conversation. And that could really give, bring healing to the relationship too. And it could set you off on a new path together. Um, Venus and Saturn and Mars are in your second house. So you've been having some issues with financial you know, Saturn has made you really get serious about your finances. Mars, too, had, you know, you might have had some expenses that came up. and But Venus there, you know, Venus has been in between Saturn and Mars last month. So money was tight. It wasn't flowing as it usually is when Venus is in the second house because Saturn was also there. And Saturn represents restriction and limitation. And it, it's kind of like you have to really get serious about money. So if you're not making enough, you may need to look for another job. Or you have to look at how you're spending your money. Where is my money going? How am I investing my money? And what kind of bills do I have? What's a good strategy to pay my bills? So financial issues have been on your mind. And now that Venus has moved away from Saturn, um, I think your financial situation will improve. And Mars will be... When Venus and Mars move into Pisces, it'll lighten up a little bit. Your second house won't be so... Um, crowded. Saturn will still be there, but Saturn's on its way. You know, he's getting towards the end of the Aquarius. So he's going to be moving out too in another couple of months, maybe um, next year. Um, so then you'll feel a lot better financially. It will help your financial situation. But the other thing that the second house is, it's not just money. It's also self-worth, self-esteem, what you value. I think you're realizing Saturn is teaching you lessons about what is truly of value. And are you valuing yourself? You know, is the work that you do, are you getting paid enough for the work that you do, for your contributions? Are you getting enough love in relationships? Are you taking action where you need to take action? Because Mars, wherever Mars is, that's where your energy goes. So, and Mars has been close to Saturn. Uh, it's actually going to have a conjunction with Saturn in April. Um, so you may feel, you may have a run-in with authority figures at that point over money. Or you may feel like, I really need to take action now. I can't put it off anymore. I, if you're, so if your financial situation is not improving, you're going to work towards it. You're going to work hard to make changes. Now, at the same time this month, um, 
Jupiter and Neptune are coming together in your third house. That's really great for um, Jupiter represents communication, uh, opportunity, and Neptune represents creativity, spirituality. So, and the third house is about communication. It's also about siblings and relatives. So you could have some lucky event happen through the people you know, like your in immediate family. Uh, maybe you heal a wound that connected with those that, those family members, or you get or you're being more social with Jupiter there. You're feeling more positive. You might be branching out. Maybe you go visit them, or they come and visit you. Um, but I feel like there's going to be some miraculous healing or mirac miraculous um, event where you have this like awakening, like it's it's a consciousness awakening aspect. Where if you didn't know how to deal with a problem, you're, you're going to get some inspiration. The North Node is in your fifth house. So there could also be something involving a child or even romance or fun, creativity. I think you're going to have fun in April. You, you could be connecting with someone that brings creativity and romance back into your life. And it's going to seem like, you know, it's like a dream come true or a miraculous event. Um, so it will take some of the pressure off the Saturn energy in your second house. And it will help you find value within yourself. Then we have the full moon in Libra. That's on the 16th. And that's happening in your 10th house of career. So the moon's in the 10th house. The sun's in the 4th house. And they are forming a square to Pluto in your 1st house. So there could be some changes. Some things could come to a head in your career. And um, you could be stepping into your power. You could be given a more responsible job. Um, you could have conflict with authority figures because you could, you know, the Pluto represents power. But it's in your first house. So I feel like people are seeing you differently at this full moon. They're seeing how powerful you really are. They're seeing that you have more to give than what they have seen in the past because your first house is how you're seen in the world um, the only thing you have to watch out for is not be don't become drunk with power don't become a bully if you get a position of authority um, if you use the power wisely you could make a change you know you could make things better for everyone the best way to use plutonian power is to do it not have a self-serving goal but make sure that you are helping others rise up as well. So it's like the rising tide that you know lifts all boats. You don't want to be selfish with Pluto, or you know, because Pluto will bring you down. So if you use your power wisely to make improvements not only in your life but everyone else, um, it will be good. You'll, you'll, that's the way to use the energy. Uh, actually, Pluto is forming a T square. So the way out of a T-square is through the opposing sign, which would be Cancer, and that's your seventh house. So what's going to be important around this full moon is relationships and nurturing. Make sure that you're connecting with people that are supportive, that are nurturing. So if you've been around people that haven't given you what you deserve or haven't really been there for you, you need to eliminate that. Walk, you know, Break away from the people that are not on Team Capricorn. And you need to connect with people that have love to give, that are supportive. So you could be ending a relationship um, or making changes in your career path and your home. Um, it's a very powerful and transformative time. Mercury and Uranus are coming together in your fifth house and they're sextiling Venus in your third house, the house of communication. So you could be getting an unexpected message or unexpected developments in the fifth house. That means, you know, love, romance, children. So for some of you, there could be a birth in the family. Or for some of you, there could be a new romance. Um, a new creative project that comes in that you, you're just loving every minute of it. Because Venus is involved. You could find love in the neighborhood, running around, connecting with friends and family. Um, there are gonna, there's going to be some happy times. You know, we have some difficult aspects. The Pluto square is difficult. But Saturn is supporting this moon. Saturn is trining the moon. And it's sextiling the sun from the second house. So you could get a promotion and an increase in salary. 
but you're also going to have an increase in responsibility. Um, but that could be a, a, a good thing. And the only thing that you have, like I said, the only thing you have to watch out for is that you don't abuse your power because there's a danger when you have Pluto strong in your chart that you could be, you know, you could go over the top. Don't be too bossy or bullying. Don't don't get power drunk with power. If you manage your power wisely, uh, in a fair way, it'll be fine. Um, then Pluto your will go retrograde at the end of the month on the 29th. So you may have to redo some things or rethink your plans um, or slow down if things have been moving too quickly. You may need to take to to reevaluate something. Like you may be reworking something and you may have to adjust some of the changes. And then um, at the end of the month, on the 30th, we have the new moon eclipse in Taurus. And that's favorable to your sign. That's happening in your fifth house. So eclipses represent, you know, sudden developments, endings, beginnings, opportunity. Um, from the fifth house, it could be a creative project. It could be a child. Uh, if you're trying to have a baby, you could get surprise, surprise pregnancy. <laughs> so if you don't want children, you be, be careful. Um, but it could be surprise developments around children. Um, there could be a lot of things going on that are happy because the fifth house is a house of joy. So I wouldn't worry too much about the eclipse, but it is very fateful. Fated events are happening. But I won't get, I don't want, that's just a sneak preview for um, the new moon solar eclipse. I will get more in depth with that next month because that eclipse energy is going to be in, in um, effect for the next six months until the next eclipse. So um, I don't want to overload you with too much information now. Let's focus on the Aries, having courage to have a new beginning, to speak up, to tell people how you feel, to have a healing conversation. Don't be afraid. Have the courage to embrace new love or new beginnings in love because it's on. And allow love to heal you. That's the main message. Love can heal all your past wounds. But you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. You can't, you know, Capricorn always wants to feel like they're it. I've got it under control. I'm together. I have to be the strong one, you know. I'm in charge. But it's okay to show that you're human. It's okay to say, you know what, I need help. Or to admit your vulnerability, to be humble and um, realize that you don't always have to have it together. It's okay. And it's okay to... Um, to look for people for, for love and for healing. You deserve it just like everybody else. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. Leave a comment if this resonated with you. This is a general reading, so it may not resonate with everyone. But if you'd like a private reading where we just deal with your issues, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website, and we will get you on the schedule. In the meantime, Capricorn, have a wonderful April. If you're celebrating, have a happy Easter, happy Ostera, um, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.